today is an unusual holiday at work and I've got the day off. My kids are at school, my wife's out shopping, there's snow on the ground for the first time this year, it's freezing cold and I'm bored to death. So I decided to make a bow drill kit. Wanna watch? This is a cottonwood limb that I picked up off the ground a few days ago on one of my walks. It, uh, it wasn't there the day before, so I know it hadn't been laying on the ground for very long. Um, it's about 30 inches long and about two inches in diameter or so. Um, this end up here appears to be a little bit punky. Looks like the bad wood only goes in maybe two or three inches. My guess is this is the, the part of the limb that was farthest away from the tree when it fell. The other end is really nice wood, nice and crispy and dry. You can see some lichens that have developed on this limb. Looks like it was probably hanging dead for quite a long time. It's dried enough that there's a crack that goes from one end to the other. I've, I've looked down in the crack a little bit. I don't see any rotten wood in there. It feels just really dry. I guess it just split due to the wood drying out. There's no bark on it. It's very lightweight. And like I said, it's cottonwood, which is really good wood for making bow drill kits from. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a piece about eight inches long up here in the known good end and make my kit from, from that. There's probably enough, probably enough wood in this limb to make three, maybe even four bow drill kits. Uh, I'm just going to make one today. Let's get to work. All right, let's start cutting this up. I'm going to use the saw blade of my uh, Victorinox Swiss Army knife. This is the Hiker model. It's the smallest Swiss Army knife that I'm aware of that has the, the saw blade. So far so good, looks like there's good wood in here. Let's split it up. Okay, I'm gonna start splitting this up with my stainless steel Mora companion. I'm just gonna rough this out. I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna split it right down the middle, a little bit on the sides to get a rough fireboard and maybe a couple of spindles and I'll do most of the shaping work whittling a little bit later on. Let's get started. This is just a piece of honeysuckle I had laying in the basement. Okay, folks, after about 15 minutes of whittling, this is what I came up with. This is my fireboard. It's about eight inches long. This end is, I don't know, maybe about five eighths of an inch thick. The other end is a, a little bit thinner, but that doesn't matter. Doesn't have to be perfect. Don't overthink it, folks. This is fire by friction. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just needs to work. My two spindles. My two spindles are each about six inches long after I got done whittling on them. They're about 
They're about as big around as my thumb. A little over a half inch, I'd say. And on the top end, I've got a light taper. It's not too pointy. That'll go into my thunderhead. And on the bottom, I have a mostly round profile that I carved. Again, folks, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to work, so don't overthink it. Don't spend too much time with this. Good enough is good enough. That's all you need. Okay, before I burn this fireboard in, I want to show you my Thunderhead and the Firebow that I'm going to be using today. This is my currently favorite Thunderhead. It's just a rock that I picked up out of a creek when I was camping with my Boy Scout troop a few months ago. I carved the divot in the Thunderhead using just the edge of a cold chisel. Just took me a few minutes. No doubt you could, uh, no doubt you could carve that divot out with a harder rock if you had access to one. I just didn't bother. I was working in my basement. I think this is limestone, and it's kind of rough overall. But inside of that divot, now that I've used it quite a bit, that divot has gotten really, really super slick. I think it's just sort of ground off little pieces of wood fibers as I've used it and packed the little pores tight. The more I use it, the more slippery this gets. I mean, it's just really super slick inside of there. It's a really, this is my current favorite Thunderhead. I love it. Fits in my hand. Just like that. I tend to like small Thunderheads. Some people like really big ones. I like them small. And this is my bow. This is a 16 inch piece of honeysuckle. It's about a half inch in diameter. It's really mostly straight. It's very lightweight. I took the bark off of it. It's really pretty. My uh, bow cord is just some nylon cord that I had. And I have taken to using what I call my modified Egyptian bow drill technique. I uh, wrap my bow cord around the spindle three times. I don't use a clove hitch like a traditional Egyptian bow would use. It ends up something like that. Okay, this gives me a lot of grip, especially with skinny spindles and wildflower spindles. Gives me a lot of grip. And I've, hold, I've held my bow cord to my fire bow using what I call a slippery figure eight stopper knot. I'll show you how to do that next. All right, folks, this is the way I make my slippery figure eight stopper knot. I just first make a bend in the cord, a little bite, and then I twist it on itself a couple of times, once, twice, and I pinch it real tight so it doesn't come apart. And then I make another bite, another bend in my cord down here, and stick it through. And then pull everything tight. And it looks kind of like that when it's done. And that will keep the bow cord from pulling out from the bow.
Okay, here's my fireboard and spindle, all burnt in and notched, ready to go. This kit's ready to make some fire with. As I mentioned earlier though, there's a little bit of snow on the ground and it's really cold outside. Practically speaking, it's gonna be a day or two before I go outside and make a fire with this kit. But in video time, it'll just be a few seconds, so stay tuned. Okay, we finally got some good weather. Let's light this kit up. Nice big ember. There it's going. The sun's actually so bright today that uh, I felt that flame before I saw it. So since we last met, I've been doing some experimenting with the kit. This is the initial divot that I was working in. And I tried several times to get an ember and I failed. And I looked at the dust and what I saw was it was kind of grainy and crumbly. It wasn't really well charred. And then I noticed that my original divot was on the side of the fireboard that was nearest the crack in that limb. And I think the wood inside that crack was a little more decayed than I thought it was. So then what I did was I switched to the good side of the fireboard and made a divot right here. And I got an ember on the first try. Sadly though, <laughs> I was leaning, leaning improperly and I had a blowout on that divot. And I made a third divot and burned it in. And that's what I got the ember with today. So, if it doesn't work on the first try, keep trying. Look at your dust. Examine the fireboard, examine the spindle, adjust. You'll eventually get it to work. Good kit, real simple, easy to make. Don't overthink it, folks. That's all for this one. Have a Merry Christmas. We'll see you again soon. Ho, ho, ho.